A government watchdog says the Peace Corps is failing to do enough to protect volunteers from sexual assault. The percentage of women in the Peace Corps who say they've suffered a sexual assault rose to 38% in 2016. That finding came in an anonymous internal survey. In 2015, a whistleblower spoke to CBS this morning about her belief there was a culture of victim blaming inside the Peace Corps. She said it prevented some sexual assault survivors from getting help. Her complaint launched a lengthy investigation. The results only recently became public. Currently, about 7,300 Peace Corps volunteers serve in 65 countries. Chris Van Cleve is outside Peace Corps headquarters in Washington, D.C. and joins us. Chris, good morning. Good morning. That Peace Corps Inspector General report found cases where the agency failed to provide a compassionate and supportive response to survivors of sexual assault. And that's despite the fact there were congressionally mandated reforms in place that were supposed to prevent a situation like this from happening. On my first day of teaching, um, that was when my sexual assault occurred. On your first day? My first day. It was March 2016. Peace Corps volunteer Megan Reithmiller was teaching in Uganda. She says that night, the school priest came to her door with a gift. He asked if we could say a prayer together. As I was finishing up the Our Father, that's when he started touching me. And I completely froze. I think I sat on that floor for probably just a half hour. Um, not knowing what to do, not knowing what to say. In a letter this month, the Office of Special Counsel, or OSC, advised President Donald Trump the Peace Corps is not doing enough to protect its volunteers from sexual assault and called for specific reforms. I feel like Peace Corps failed me every step of the way. Volunteer Denae Smith was attacked while working in a remote Dominican Republic village. She reported it to the Peace Corps in 2015. They told me that as a volunteer, it was my job to have been more proactive to prevent it from happening. Within a week, the Peace Corps sent her home. To date, we've heard from more than two dozen former volunteers whose stories point to a troubling pattern. One the OSC wants to change. It's calling for better training for in-country Peace Corps employees because 16% of reported sexual assaults are committed by host family members or co-workers. There were not appropriate boundaries. The person who attacked me was a fellow teacher. There was no training for him. There was no training for any of my fellow teachers at that school. The Peace Corps says that kind of training is not required by law. The OSC wants stricter employee screening rules, noting often volunteers accused of sexual assault are able to resign, avoiding punishment and any mention of the allegations in their personnel files. One such volunteer was even rehired by the Peace Corps. And citing a recent Peace Corps Inspector General report, OSC highlighted problems with the agency's response to a sexual assault. 14% of assaulted volunteers had to wait more than four weeks to get counseling, and some were limited in the number of sessions due to a misunderstanding of Peace Corps policy. Reith Miller was allowed only six sessions. I was spiraling downwards, and I knew it, and I asked for more counseling. I called the doctor, and she said, but we need to have a serious talk about whether you're fit to be a volunteer or not. Did you feel like they were blaming you for what was happening to you? 100%. Do you think the environment of the Peace Corps has improved in the two and a half years? Sadly, no. Whistleblower Kelly Green was hired as the first Peace Corps victim's advocate after Congress mandated reforms to how the agency responded to sexual assault cases in 2011. She says she was pushed out for trying to change the culture. Her 2015 whistleblower complaint prompted the letter from the special counsel. To continually hear on a recurring basis the same stories that follow the same theme shows that there's a real systemic problem within Peace Corps. The Peace Corps tells CBS this morning it has made significant progress in recent years, having instituted more than 30 new policies aimed at reducing the risk of sexual assault to volunteers and doing a better job at responding to victims. Members of Congress shouldn't have had to get involved uh, on this issue. Congressman Ted Poe, who authored the 2011 Peace Corps reforms, began working on a new bill requiring the Peace Corps to do more to protect sexual assault victims after our initial report. That bill is now before Congress. The Peace Corps should have been doing the right thing all along and coming down on the side of our Peace Corps volunteers, our angels abroad. Megan Reithmiller says she's made progress since her assault and would even consider going back to the Peace Corps. Even though you left feeling like they were blaming you as a victim of sexual assault, you would go back and do it again? If they changed their policies and procedures, I would. 
Now, Megan says she did report the assault to Ugandan police, but no action was taken against the priest. Part of Congressman Poe's legislation aims to hold foreign nationals more responsible for crimes against Peace Corps volunteers committed abroad. It does have bipartisan support, and the congressman says he is optimistic it can become law this year. The Peace Corps says it is in the process of responding to the OSC letter. Nora? Great reporting there, Chris. Thank you so much.